Hi. So in this video, I'm, I'm just going to run through um, how we can model a cyclone um, constructed dam. Uh, over the last few months, we've had quite a few inquiries from people about how you know how we can use Mark 3D for modeling cyclone construction. And so this is just a simple example uh, that I'm just going to show you how we can do that. So what, we, what we're starting with here is we might have some survey data or we might have a model of our dam. Now, we can't model the continuous movement of cyclones around the perimeter of the dam. Um, it's just not really an easy thing for, to do in Mark 3D. But what we can do is we can divide our perimeter up into a number of discrete cells. And instead of kind of moving gradually along the crest, we just kind of work within this cell, fill it, then move to the next cell, fill it. Um, as with cyclones, um, you know, as we work out how much material we need to do the raise, so the underflow volume, we can then, you know, take based on the cyclone split, we know how much overflow material needs to be poured within each cell. So as we go through and, and raise a cell, we'll work out you know, the, the raise volume, but then we'll also work out the volume of tailings that needs to be poured. And so we can go around the perimeter here and for a certain, you know, for maybe a two meter lift um, height, we can work out, you know, based on um, tailings feed, um, we can work out how long it's gonna take to move around the perimeter. So this is what we've, so the cells here, they're just polygons. Um, they're just closed, closed polygons and um, these, this is what we're going to use to denote the different areas for the cyclones to work in. So I'm going to come through and do my first run here. Um, so this is, uh, we're using a macro here um, to, that was written to, to kind of make this process a bit easier. Um, I'll go through how we actually build that macro in, a, um, in another video. But what we can do, um, you know, as long as we've got a base grid in our cells, we can then come through and, and use this. So here we've got our base grid, which is this, um, this surface here, our cells, which are these polygons. So the raise elevation, the current elevation of the dam is 115, so we're going to raise it to 117. And the raise is done using a dam template um, that represents the, the cross-section profile for the cyclone raise. So this is a two meter raise. The, the, the tonnage per day of tailings material being delivered is 5,000. Dry density, 1.3 tons per cubic meter. Um, for the cyclone splits, we're saying 35% of the tailings ends up in the underflow. So this is what goes to, to make the, um, the dam fill. Uh, we've also got a reliability factor of cyclones, so they may not be in use 100% of the time. So in this case, I'm just saying that, you know, they're only switched on 75% of, of the time that tailings is being delivered. And then for the pond, uh, I've got just set the elevation at elevation 110. So it's using a fixed elevation pond model. Um, we could run this with a, you know, with a fixed volume or with other, other pond models. Um, this example is just using fixed pond elevation. So I hit OK here. And what it will do is go through and then look at the, the raise volumes for each of these cells. So we'll see it kind of gradually go through and do these little incremental dam raises. Down the bottom here, we can see that it's calculating our fill volume. So this is our cyclone underflow volume. Okay, so now we've got our total volume of dam fill and it's gonna go through and for each of these cells, it's gonna deposit the appropriate volume of cyclone overflow um, from each of them using the pond elevation of 110. So again, if we just zoom in here, we can maybe see the, uh, the tailings deposition as it's going on and it will work its way around until it's deposited tailings from all the cells. So it's finally done. Once this completes, it's gonna just give us a, um, a little hyperlink down the bottom here that we can click on that will copy all the, the summary data um, to our clipboard and then paste it into Excel. And we'll also end up with just a, a georeference kind of overlay that we can use to show the different, the different um, tailings deposition um, uh, surfaces from each cell. So I'll just get rid of all these. I'll bring in my overlay. So there's the, um, just the colors to show where the tailings has gone from each, each cell. Um, if I click on this hyperlink here and then just come into Excel, I can paste my results. And so here for each cell, we've got our target elevation, the raise volume, the deposition volume, um, the beach elevation that, that we got to, um, how many days based on the feed rate we needed to be there to build our cell. 
And then here we've got our cumulative time. So then we could come through for the, you know, for another two meter lift. And we can run our raise dam function again. This time our base grid will be the output from run zero. And we'll say going up to elevation 119, we'll let, maybe let our pond come up a few meters. So we'll say it's at 112. Maybe this time we'll work with a low reliability of the cyclone. So they're only active 50% of the time and hit okay. And again, this will come through and do that whole process again. So there, once again, we've got our, um, our new surface. We'll have a summary table for the, um, for the results here. And again, we can just paste this and then we can see, you know, this is what the next, the next lift kind of looks like. So anyway, so this is just a really simple example. Um, you know, there are many things that we could do with this. We could come through and look at, this is kind of, at the moment, this is kind of planning by raise height. And then we can work out what the duration is, the time. Um, the other thing that we could do would be to sort of say, we've got a month's worth of tailings. Let's see how far we can get through each cell and then kind of generate um, snapshots showing the monthly status of the, uh, of the facility. Um, it also, it's, you know, it's a, it's a good tool to, we can use this to look at, well, what, what if the reliability of our cyclones is not what we, what we think it is? What if, you know, what if they're down more often? What if the, we get more underflow or more, more overflow? Um, than we expected, we can you know, very quickly see the impact on on all that. Uh, anyway, so thanks for watching. Um, it's um, we'll put an, a tutorial on actually generating a script like this up on our help desk, uh, hopefully soon. Um, but if anyone has questions, please get in touch with us. We're more than happy to to talk about this and 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 show how it can be adapted to other situations. Thanks a lot.